Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video I want to talk to you guys about how I ship my blazers, sport coats, and suits. That's about all I sell on eBay now, uh, for the most part. And I just want to show you guys how I ship them because I get so many questions from you guys. Basically, what is the best way to ship them? And I've got uh, about 10 items I'm shipping out today. As you can see right over here. As you can see right here, I got about 10 things that I'm shipping out today. And they're all going to different places and I'm going to be shipping a few of them quite differently than others. So in this video, I'm going to go in-depth and show you guys exactly how I do it. It's important to make sure that you're shipping out things correctly so that they get where they're going and they don't cost too much. There's a lot of ways you can really mess up on this, so hopefully this video will be helpful for you. Now, there's obviously a few different ways that you can ship stuff. Uh, I, I like to ship using a box especially if you're going to be shipping something that has uh, fragile buttons on it or perhaps if you have like a blazer it might have metal buttons that could get dented. One thing I never do, I never send anything using a poly mailer. There is a time and a place to use a poly mailer, but in my opinion if you're selling a suit or a sport coat or something like that, you just generally don't want to use that because the buttons can get dented. Um, despite the fact that this is actually pretty, pretty uh, durable, it's not as durable as a box. And also, it just looks a little bit less professional, in my opinion. I think a lot of people would probably agree with that. It's just more susceptible to being smushed, squashed, you know, uh, things can happen to it that can't happen to it if it's in a box. A box is just so much more rigid, durable, and uh, it makes for a better presentation, in my opinion. In the past, I have used uh, bubble mailers. Not to be confused with this, it's a poly mailer. It doesn't have any bubbles on it. A bubble mailer would be something like this, where it's actually, you know, it's like a poly bag, except it has basically bubble wrap uh, inside it. It's a bubble mailer. What I like to use is USPS provided boxes. You can get them online, delivered to your doorstep for free. If you go to USPS.com, I'll put a link in the description below. But if you're interested in getting those free boxes, Definitely take advantage of it. One of the reasons I don't like to use recycled boxes is just for a matter of storage purposes and also there's a whole bunch of different other reasons why. Uh, it could be something to do with an odor. It's a little bit less professional than a clean, crisp, new box. I really like the USPS boxes and they're, they're designed for shipping. That's what they're made for. So I like to use those and like I said, I get them delivered right to my doorstep for free. So it's a great deal. So um, I'm just going to show you guys the first item that I'm shipping here today. I'm shipping this. This is a vintage uh, gold metal blazer. And for something like this, this is going to fit inside the boxes that I use. Different boxes are different shapes and sizes. I'll show you guys the ones that I actually use. So these are the ones that I most commonly use. Regional A box. As you can see here, it says right on it, regional rate box A. I like to use this one because up to 15 pounds, this will go anywhere. Uh, in the US and it, I guess I don't really have to go into the technicalities of all the details as to why this box works but basically if it fits in this box it's gonna ship to pretty much anywhere in the US for the most part cheaper than priority mailboxes uh, for example I'm in Connecticut here on the East Coast if I want to ship it to say California this will run me about, I think it's like $9.50 or, or $10 or so if I were to ship it with priority mail and it was say three pounds that would probably cost me well they just had a recent uh, rate bump so it's, I think it's like 16 or 17 now uh, so I could save an awful lot of money using these and the best part about these boxes is uh, pretty much everything that I ship fits in these some suits maybe not quite if I'm selling like a tweed uh, that's a little bit thicker a little bit heavier it's not gonna really work if I want to ship more than one that's it's not gonna fit because this is kinda thin this works just about right for, for one item. The next item, the next box that I use is the mailing box, priority mailing box. It just says mailing box. Uh, that means it's just plain priority mail. There's obviously different options that you can use to ship stuff. I'm going to show you that stuff on the computer here as I'm creating the label. But when you use these, basically they can go anywhere, uh, any you know anywhere in the whole world actually. Um, but what you do with these ones is if the if it's going to be really a lot closer. Say I'm shipping it from Cal uh, say I'm shipping it from Connecticut to say New York uh, State, right across the border. So it doesn't cost very much. In that case, I could probably load this thing up, or theoretically, I could ship priority mail. Uh, they have bigger boxes. Uh, I don't have one down. It's, there's one downstairs right now. It's a little bit bigger, but you can also order that one online. 
from USPS.com. And basically what, what I do is if it's local, I use this box. It's a little bit cheaper. Sometimes it's a lot cheaper. Uh, it's usually just a few dollars difference for the most part. Basically the regional A box is more restrictive because it's a set size and you can't go any bigger than that. The next box I use, uh, which uh, generally I don't really use this box a whole lot, but it's the medium flat rate box. As you can see this box is noticeably bigger. It's only a little bit longer, but it's a lot thicker. So this is what I'll use if I'm shipping out like a big three piece suit or uh, something like say two suits. You could probably fit about two suits in this if, if you do it just right. And the way that this works is if it fits it ships. And for this one it's up to 70 pounds. So I could conceivably ship 70 pounds of weight to California. Um, but the fees recently went up on this one. But if I'm shipping it to say California and it's not going to work with regional A because it's just too big, I can sometimes use this one and this will work out really well. So if I've got something that's like, let's just say it's six pounds. If I use this for six pounds to California, I don't know, it might be like $25, $30. I, I don't exactly know how much it'll cost. But one thing I do know is that this box is always the same as long as it fits. The last way that I like to ship uh, blazers and sport coats, I don't ship suits like this because they simply don't fit. Uh, you could conceivably make it fit in here, but I don't know. I think that that's really pushing it and it's unprofessional and it could damage a suit because you're really cramming it in there and it looks unprofessional. But I like to use, I like to use this, which is the padded flat rate envelope. And for this one, I think it's like 620 or something. The fees went up, but I think it's, I think it's like 620, which is pretty, pretty damn cheap for what it does. If I, for, so for this blazer here, I could fit this into here professionally, neatly, nicely, and I could do a pretty good job with it. Uh, one of the things that is really important to note is that you gotta fold it up the right way, you gotta package it the right way when you're putting it in here, which I'll show you guys in this video. If you don't do that, then you could get yourself into some trouble because it's gonna leave the buttons exposed and they could get damaged, but for the most part, for certain items, as long as they're not too big, as long as you're not crumpling it up and really mashing it in there, and uh, it's, a pretty good op it's a pretty good option to use, particularly for the cheaper items. I don't like to ship an expensive thing in this, I will just use a box because it's just a few dollars more. But if you're really trying to save money or you're trying to keep your profit margin up on a cheaper item, then in my opinion, it makes sense to use these as long as you're shipping them properly within the, within the rules that I kind of just shared with you guys. So with that being said, I'm going to start shipping out all these items and we're going to just talk about it as we go along. These boxes are great because they have a self-sealing, because basically they're self-sealing, which is awesome. Don't have to use any tape. Just close like that. I take it like this. And one thing I'll also mention, I like to use these bags. And the reason that I use these bags is because for one, well, it serves multiple, multiple purposes. It's why one of the reasons it's so important to have. For one thing, when I'm storing my items before I, before I sell them, right after I list them, uh, what, I like to put them in these bags because it protects them from dust, dirt, you know, bugs, uh, mice, anything you could imagine that, that might get into these. Uh, I keep them in a garage. Um, I currently have an inventory of almost a thousand things. So I store them in the garage in bins and that this just keeps them nice and clean. And then secondarily, this is the, probably another really nice important thing to mention if you're sending them to somebody. This also protects them from all of those problems on during transit. So let's say that the box pops open for some reason or maybe it gets punctured. Uh, this just gives it another second layer of protection. And especially sometimes when I'm shipping things out, uh, anything can happen to that box. And especially if it's going overseas. So something to think about is I like to use this. It's, a, it's like cheap insurance. And it looks a lot more professional. And uh, as you can see, it just looks nice. Right? I mean, it just looks nice. So when the customer gets this, they're like, oh, that looks nice. That's how you want it to be when you're a buyer. You don't want to get something that's all awkward in uh, a stop and shop bag or... You know, I've seen some pretty nasty stuff before when I've purchased online. People will send me uh, a bag that, that uh, it just looks messy. It looks kind of nasty. Like, what was in that before you put this suit in it? You know, who knows? So, I like to use these. They're very cheap. I think they're like 15 cents a bag. If you're sending out a serious item that's worth a decent amount of money, 
if, in my opinion, I think you want it to look professional and you want the item to be protected. This will protect it from scuffing or any sort of damage that might happen to it. And the other thing is, it slides so nicely right into the box. There's no, there's no guesswork. It's like, it's like the right size, see? So, there you go. Now, um, what I like to do is just gently compress a little bit, kind of push the air out of that a little bit, and uh, fold that down and then you're good to go. Just print the label and uh, stick it on. And there you go, you got the label and you're all set. I don't have to slather tape all over this thing, I don't have to wrap it around and make it all crazy. It's good to go, it looks professional. If someone gets this in the mail, they're like, oh, that's nice. And then when they just gently open it up, they've got this nice thing, it looks protected, it looks serious, it looks nice. And then what do you get? You get a happy customer. So that's the first way that I like to ship them regional A. We'll talk about the next item that I ship. Oh, another thing I'll mention also on these bags, I have two different types of bags. I've tried different ones. Uh, these are about the same, but one thing that's consistent on all of them, it has a suffocation warning on it. It's just an extra added step to make sure that you're protected. So here's a nice sport coat. Uh, this one is not too thick. It's just about the right size for a padded flat rate envelope. But if it's really close, if it's shipping really close, it'll actually be cheaper to use a priority mail box. So we're going to see exactly where this is going, and uh, we're going to decide on what we're doing with it based on that. As you can see here, this is a really nice looking jacket, and so we want to ship it and make sure that the customer gets it in excellent condition. This one sold for 55 bucks, pretty good, and we're going to ship it. Okay, this one's going to Texas. Priority mail box, 1146. Parcel select, that's something I didn't really show you guys before, but it's actually more expensive for slower service. I never use parcel select. Regional A, 919. Well, we could use that. If this was a bit more of an expensive item, I probably would. Uh, padded flat red envelope, 630. So, you could save yourself almost $3.00 by using a padded flat rod envelope. In my opinion, why not? Uh, it, this is a smaller item, it's a thinner item, it fits in there nicely, it's gonna be sent there, it's gonna look professional. So, the obvious choice here is padded flat rod envelope, uh, and that's what we're gonna use. All right, so as you can see here, it's got the buttons, and the other side, there's no buttons. So, what we wanna do for this is fold it in half so that the buttons are on the inside compress out some of the air, and that's a pretty small package. But at the same time, you know, I'm not like compressing this, you know, like crazy. Uh, this could still, this isn't damaging it, this isn't going to destroy it, so this is ready to go. Now, sometimes this takes a little bit of work, but if you do it quickly and you do it just right, basically I just like to put it in at the bigger side, where like the shoulder pads are. Basically just compress it down a little bit. You get better at this the more you do. Kind of just curl this a little bit on the top here so that it doesn't interfere with the adhesive. I kind of just like to Make sure it's good to go. And then you have a nice flat surface to apply the label. And then this one's good to go. Now in my opinion that's a great deal. If you're saving yourself three dollars over the course of let's say you ship out a thousand of those a year, that's three thousand dollars profit uh, that you're basically just throwing away. Basically, and the same thing for the regional A boxes. If you don't use regional A boxes and you're using priority instead, you could easily be saving $5,000 a year by just being a little bit smarter and a little bit more careful as to how you're shipping things. All right, next thing I'm gonna be shipping is a suit. And this is a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. Usually these are about four pounds. It starts to affect the cost a little bit if I'm shipping out a little bit further than right next door to my neighbors or you know a few states over. If I'm shipping to California, this is going to be quite a bit more expensive. And it really makes sense to use that regional A box if I if I can. And this one, it's not crazy thick, 
It's not crazy huge, so it should be able to fit in there. But I don't know where this is going, so let's take a quick look. All right, this one's going to Texas. Um, big shout out to all the Texas buyers out there. <laughs> I sell a lot of stuff to Texas, so it's a big state, so I guess you can't be surprised about that. But So it's going to Texas, and let's just check to see how much this is going to cost. All right, so most suits generally are about four pounds. Some of them are sometimes five if they're made of like a tweed, or um, sometimes they're even a little bit less if they're something like maybe a linen or, you know, some sort of a lightweight material. In this case, we have a few different options we can do. It's not going to fit in the padded flatrate envelope, so we can't use that. For suits, that's just out of the question. For medium flat rate box, we could use that. For, and that would be 1205. For priority mail, it'd be 1336. But the best bet here is regional box A, which is 919. So for four pounds, that's pretty much what I use for almost all the suits that I ship out. I've heard a lot of people say that they don't like to use regional A boxes because it doesn't fit. But the reality is, for me, uh, a suit will fit inside a regional A box just barely. It'll be just sometimes a little bit snug. It'll definitely fit. I usually like to keep a stockpile of these, and I usually like to keep a stockpile of these. And so, I don't know. I have like a hundred or so at any given time, uh, and I have like a small little area here where I keep them. But regional A boxes, I love them. I use them for, as I said, all my suits. I use them for. Um, Stuff that's kind of a little bit smaller, um, something that I can get really compact without without uh, scrunching it up. In this case, this is going to fit just about perfectly, maybe just a little bit tight, but it should work. So these are a little bit tougher to get in here sometimes. Now you see, if you fold this, it's just it's just too thick for a padded flatter envelope. I could conceivably jam this in there awkwardly, and it'll look like a crazy person, you know, is just trying to just trying to desperately save money any way they can. And I think that is, it's unprofessional. You know, a lot of people are, are a lot of buyers, whether you agree with me or not, whether it's professional or not or whatnot, a lot of people are, are going to be turned off by that. And uh, if you use a box, it just looks a hell of a lot better. So, similar to a sport coat, um... you just got a little bit more material to work with, but for these what I like to do is I kind of compress it down here at the bottom. I kind of really try to get it, you know, deep down there because once the box is already closed down here, you can kind of work with it a little bit. And then it's going to kind of find its way back up to the top anyway uh, when, you, when you start to seal it and then you compress it a little bit. So. As you can see, it's kind of a, it's kind of a tight fit right now. And when I compress this down, it's going to kind of put the lumpy area that I just made, um, and it's going to kind of redistribute it a little bit. All right, so as you can see, that fit nicely, and I just kind of compress it down a little bit, and it kind of just, you know, kind of just moves it around a little bit. As you can see, there's there's occasionally like a little tiny bit of a of a bump to it, but that's okay. Uh, in this case, there isn't, so this is good to go. And the shipping price for this, like I said, is a great deal. All right, guys, I got a few items here where they're going to be going to the same person. They bought more than one item. So this is a really good example of how I'm going to ship these items to somebody who bought more than one item. It's going to be a little bit heavier. It's going to be a little bit bigger. So we'll just ship those out. All right, so for this one, I got to ship two. And these are two suits. So this is actually kind of big, kind of heavy. Uh, this is probably going to be about six pounds or so. We'll see. And I'm not sure if this will fit inside one of these priority mailboxes. It's going to be close. Uh, I would say it's, it's probably not. Uh, especially considering the fact that the top part here, which is usually poking out a little bit, I'm not going to be able to compress it down into the box. So we're going to have to use a bigger box, or we're going to have to use one of the medium flat rate boxes, depending on uh, where it's going. Uh, we're going to check to see where it's going right now. All right, we got two suits going to Maryland, so that's pretty close. That means I will most likely be using the priority mailbox. Now, since I got two items here and I don't know exactly what the full official weight is, I'm going to weigh it. Uh, this is kind of important. If you're trying to ship stuff and you don't have a scale, uh, I think that you're, you know, you don't have the tools that you need. So, uh, 
I'm gonna use this use the shipping scale. I have one downstairs also that has like a detached little thing. It makes it easier to read if you're shipping on a big box. Uh, this is the shipping scale that I've had for. I think I've had this exact same scale for about for about three years. I had the other one. It was the same one for three years, but this one has worked pretty well for me. It is a Waymax, um, and it's you know it's it's battle worn. It's got a whole bunch of crap all over it. So, but this thing has worked pretty well. All right, so these are going to be six pounds. So if we plug that in over here. All right, so six pounds, priority mail is 818, so that's a really good deal. If we want to use the medium flat rate box, it'd be 1205. Padded flat rate envelope, 630, obviously can't fit in that. Regional A, 660, obviously can't fit in that. So as you can see, we're going to use priority mail 818. All right, guys, so since these are obviously going to be a little bit bigger than the other boxes, they're just not going to fit. So we have to use a bigger box. And and funny enough, we are going to use this box. It was downstairs. I actually just got a new whole bundle of them today from the USPS. But uh, this is a little bit bigger. It'll hold a whole bunch more stuff. And it's a lot thicker. It's just perfect. This box is actually, uh, let's see, 12 by 12 by 8. So obviously, this is a little bit bigger. It's going to work a little bit better for what I need. The other thing worth mentioning is that this is the biggest uh, priority mail box that you can get from the USPS. And actually, if you have to ship something that's even bigger, you can just combine them. I'll try to make a video down the road talking about that because I'm sure people are curious about that one as well. But, so this is what it will look like when it's all done. So, it's going to hold a lot more stuff. But unfortunately, you do have to tape this one. And what I like to use is the scotch tape. Uh, this is heavy duty tape. I've, I've used cheap tape in the past for the longest time and uh, I'm finally converted. I don't use that anymore. So uh, if you're interested in a tape that actually works, I like to use this one. It's scotch heavy duty tape. You know, the last thing you want is for something to bust open in the middle of, you know, when you're sending it to a customer. Some people will actually take that, take tape to the regional A boxes or padded flat or envelopes. I don't like to do that because personally, I just think it's a waste of tape. And for this, uh, one of the reasons that this tape is better than the others is I don't really have to use very much of it. With uh, the cheap tape, I always have to cover it all over like crazy to get it to stick and to, you know, do its job. So, here we have these two items. We're just going to load them up in this box and send them out. Might have to fiddle with this a little bit. But that should be good to go. The other thing I like to mention is if I'm shipping it like this, uh, let's see, I could probably fit one more suit in there if I compress them a little bit. Uh, but one thing I like to mention is... I never like to leave it exposed. If I'm going to be shipping it, let's say, you know, I've got this all closed up, right? I don't like to leave it like exposed underneath because someone could come through with a box cutter or a knife or whatever, cut that right open. And even though it does have this plastic stuff here, which should protect it a little bit, I always like to put just a little bit more something on top of that just to protect it from uh, being hit by something. In that case, I've got some uh, remnants here from ordering from the USPS. I don't like to uh, bust, I don't like to take a fresh new box and bust it apart and use that. I think that's kind of just dishonest and immoral. So I like to take uh, an older box, everyone's got cardboard laying around, right? Uh, just as long as it's something professional. I wouldn't use like, uh, I wouldn't use like a, a cat litter cardboard or something like that. I've seen people do that before. So I like to just take a little, a little bit, kind of just put it like that maybe, that, that would probably be suitable. And if you had some sort of extra packing material like bubble wrap or whatever, then that's fine too. Uh, in this case, I don't really have any laying around at the time, so I'm just going to close this up. Another thing you want to make sure is that you weigh this after it's packed up in case you added too much weight to it. And it looks like that's what we just did. Six, point, six pounds, 0 0.4 ounces. <laughs> so that piece, that little piece of cardboard I added in there probably just cost me an extra 30 cents. So in this case, it's gonna cost me just a little bit extra to send this, pretty straightforward here. But just remember, the box does uh, add some weight to it. So make sure you do, again, double check before you send it out. In this case, I was off by just 0.4 ounces, which, you know, it's kind of crappy, but you don't, you don't wanna make sure you round down. You have to round up because what happens is if you screw up on that, you drop it off as with a prepaid label on it and they don't check it, Let's just say it goes to that customer. That customer has to pay the extra amount uh, that's due. So you don't want that because then you're going to get a negative and um, that's, that's a problem. So don't do it. So I've got 
two items here that I'm sending to another person. Uh, it's great, obviously, when customers buy more than one suit. <laughs> so the total value of this is about $220. So for something that's like $220, that's sort of, I would say, on the upper range of, of stuff that you're going to sell if you're selling if you're selling a suit or something like that. Uh, around $200, that's probably a good time when you should add signature confirmation. So that's what I like to do. eBay and PayPal, they like to go by, okay, is there delivery confirmation? Um, and then you're pretty much covered if it is. At least in my experience, I've been covered when the customer said, oh, I didn't get it, what the hell's going on here? Uh, I just say, well, the tracking shows that it's been delivered. And um, But another extra step that you do just to make sure that you're more, uh, more protected is you use signature confirmation. That way I know that the guy got it. Somebody signed for it, so it's delivered, obviously. And the, also, that makes sure that the whoever is delivering it delivers it. So sometimes, you know, they might drop it off at the wrong place. This way, you're absolutely certain it's going to that address. And you're absolutely certain that someone signed for it. So it's going to get to where it's going when you do signature confirmation. You'd be surprised how often it says delivered, but it's not actually delivered. In this case, it's getting delivered if it has signature confirmation. It's something that I like to do. Uh, generally speaking, around the 150-ish mark is what I like to do. If something is like damaged or destroyed, you automatically have $100 coverage uh, with Priority Mail, so that's nice. I don't really see why I would insure something if it was if it was uh, a little less than that. I mean, for something like this, it's yeah, it's a $220 item, but what is possibly going to happen to this to this suit, right? I mean, what is going to happen to it? It's going to get run over by a car. I mean, it's going to get run over by a car. It'd still be fine, really. It would be. Uh, so. In my opinion, for something like this, I don't insure it. If you want to, you could. Um, if there's something that's fragile, I like to insure that. But that's one of the reasons that I enjoy uh, clothing. You generally don't really have much of a problem at all. Um, and in this case, you know, this is going to go to to the buyer. They're going to get it, and I'm going to know they got it. So I don't get screwed out of two hundred and twenty dollars. Now, still, anything can happen. They could say, "Oh, you shipped one item," or "Oh, you shipped, uh, you know, something. You shipped me a rock." Anything could happen, but I'm just saying, if you're going to ship stuff out, for something like this, $220, I like to make sure I add signature confirmation, and I'd recommend that you do also. On stuff that's cheaper, $100 or less, I don't know, not really. Uh, I don't bother. Some people, I think they they go overboard a little bit. They they uh, they add, you know, insurance, signature confirmation, da 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 because they sell something for 50 Well, in my opinion, you're really hurting yourself at that point, because the percent uh, that you are... Adding to the cost of shipment is a little bit too, a little bit more than I think it should be. So that's what I like to do. Uh, these ones are all set up. They're all printed out. Everything's all set. And I'm going to use USPS Pickup. And so to show you guys that and talk to you a little bit about that, we're going to go outside and uh, I'm going to show you how I do that. All right, guys, as you can see, it's ready to go. Now, one of the reasons I really like to use USPS for this purpose is because they'll actually come by and pick it right up. For the longest time, I used to be a believer in just bringing it right down to the post office. I don't know, it's kind of more fulfilling that way, I think, to drop them off and be like, oh yeah, that was great, wasn't it? One thing I always do is I make sure I put this up just to make sure that the guy knows, okay, uh, there's some stuff that needs to be picked up at this house. And uh, once that's all set, just leave it out on the porch and you're good to go. Like I said though, I used to just bring it over all the time. The first time I ever used USPS pickup, it was kind of like, I don't know, it was like the day after a holiday and the guy didn't pick it up. So one thing I will just say, if you're gonna use USPS pickup, it's great, but make sure they pick it up. If it's like four o'clock, maybe, you know, 4.15 or so, you might wanna make a call and just be like, hey, I scheduled this pickup, uh, is someone gonna pick this up? because the first time I used USPS pickup, uh, they didn't pick it up, and uh, let's just say some packages maybe got there a little bit late. Ever since that first time, I just left a note in the mailbox. I said, hey, um, this is gonna be a regular thing from now on. Please be sure to check because I will normally have a pickup. That being said, these are all set, they're ready to go, and, uh, and uh, they're just gonna come right over and pick it up for free. So that's just fantastic. It saves you time, saves you money, and saves you hassle. So uh, I'm really excited about that. 
If you're interested in any of the stuff that I showed you guys in this video, like the uh, like the plastic bags I use to protect my uh, my clothing, or the tape or the scale, or anything like that, or the USPS information, please be sure to click the links in the description down below. And if you have any comments or questions about this video, please be sure to let me know what you think in the comments also.